Hi, this is Sian again. Today, I'll be making Korean kimbap. My friends are coming over today, so I've decided to make kimbap. Kimbap literally means seaweed rice. Kimbap is made of rice and other combinations of protein and vegetables wrapped into a sheet of seaweed. Start with the cooking the rice in the instant pot or any other rice cooker. We are going to prepare the rest of the ingredients while the rice gets cooked. I blanched the spinach in boiling water for about 30 seconds. Strain it out and cool the spinach right away. Then squeeze all the water out of spinach. Add one third of a tablespoon of oyster sauce and add a bit of salt and sesame oil. For egg pancakes, I use four eggs with a bit of salt. Preheat the pan and make egg pancakes. When the bottom side looks well cooked, flip it over. Now cool it down and cut it into strips. Try to cut them in consistent widths. For carrots, I use the mandolin to save time. I think adding lots of carrots to kimbap makes the kimbap taste better. I use three medium-sized carrots. Add a bit of oil and salt to the carrot and lightly cook. I used mandolin for cucumbers also to save time, but I realized using mandolin squeezed out a lot of water from the cucumber. I recommend just cutting cucumber into long strips. Season it with salt and let it sit on a sieve. This is pickled burdock roots. We add them to traditional kimbap in Korea. You can find pickled burdock roots for kimbap in any Asian store. Pickled burdock roots are salty, so don't add any additional salt. Now slice up the spam in long rectangles. Cook them till they're golden brown. In Korea, if you go on a field trip in school or have any events outside, 8 out of 10 will all bring kimbap to it. I think that's why all Koreans love kimbap. For tuna kimbap, I'm using Dongwon tuna. It is the most popular canned tuna in Korea. First, I'm gonna strain the oil out of the tuna. I added two spoons of mayo and half a spoon of sugar. Tuna kimbap is especially popular in Korea. On the Korean Netflix show The Glory, the main character eats a lot of tuna kimbap. This tuna kimbap will be more delicious and much healthier than the store-bought ones from the show. Now the rice is done cooking. I'm adding half of a tablespoon of salt, two tablespoons of sesame oil, and two tablespoons of perilla oil. Sprinkled in some sesame seeds and mixed everything up well. I love perilla oil so much. Combining the sesame oil and perilla oil makes the rice much tastier. You can find perilla oil in Korean grocery stores. But don't worry, sesame oil alone is still amazing. If you like spicy food, you can choose to add one or two jalapenos. I pickled the jalapeno Korean style, but it has only been a day since I pickled it, so the jalapeno is not well pickled. I finally chopped up the pickled jalapenos and added 2 spoons of soy sauce, 1 third of a tablespoon of oyster sauce, and half a spoon of chili powder and mix it up. Adding this to the kimbap adds a bit of kick and an additional umami bomb. There are no right or wrong ingredients to your kimbap, so you can use any leftover meat and vegetables. Add about a handful of rice onto the seaweed. Spread them evenly and thinly on the sheet of seaweed. We didn't have any seaweed specific for kimbap, but luckily my friends brought them here. Kimbap seaweed has a shiny side and a rough side. You should put all the ingredients on the rough side. Right now, this seaweed isn't kimbap seaweed, so I have to add a line of rice on top of the seaweed to use as glue when wrapping. It prevents the kimbap from opening back up when eating.
A good tip when wrapping the kimbap is to add all the ingredients slightly to the bottom. Then when it's all wrapped, the ingredients will all be in the middle and it won't burst open when eating. Now add all the ingredients into different combinations to your liking and start rolling. I added a handful of carrots at the end. The kimbap rolling tool allows you to roll the kimbap with even pressure and shape. However, you can roll it slowly with just your hands perfectly. At last, spread a bit of sesame oil on the kimbap. All of my friends tried rolling one today, but then I lost the video of the best one. It was cool to see how differently everyone made kimbap. Like what's the difference? Like is kimbap and kimbap? Like oh, is it like kimbap? <laughs> He put both spam and tuna and added a spoonful of jalapeno. This could have been perfect if you added and spread the rice more. I feel like it won't be able to wrap the whole ingredients in place. But with the, with two B or double, double yeah. What is this? Oh, the pronunciation. When cutting the kimbap. A small tip would be to hone the knife and put a bit of sesame oil on it before cutting. Sometimes rice gets stuck on the knife and stops it from cutting the kimbap nicely. But by far the best way to cut is to use bread knife. I don't have bread knife at home so maybe it's time for me go to shopping. Back in the day when my grandma made me a kimbap, she used to give me the ends of kimbap to make the kimbap look nicer. But the ends of kimbap usually are the best tasting. We had everyone trying cutting it too. Do you see the piece of rice stuck on the knife? That's why it was not cutting the kimbap well. But they figured out a new way of cutting, which was cool. The day after the ultimate feast, there was leftover kimbap. I used it to make egg kimbap pancakes. If you have any leftover kimbap, give it a try. Kimbap is both healthy and delicious. Children especially love it. You should give it a try. Thank you for watching. Bye guys.